If you're into cars at all, you know the name Chip Foose. Today we're featuring a really cool 32 Ford Roadster that was built by Chip's father Sam, also a very talented hot rod builder. The thing that makes this car so iconic, besides that it's a Deuce Roadster, is that Chip was still in design school when he asked the car's current owner, Wayne Tyson, if he could design the car for him. In the video, we'll show you and tell you about the specific alterations that Chip thought would really highlight the classic lines of this old Ford. You could tell even then that Chip certainly had an eye for design, but more specifically, how to take an iconic design and make it even better, but very subtly. Since this car was built, Sam and Chip have built countless other cars, but sadly, Sam left us in 2018. Chip is, and has been for some time, one of the most sought-after builders in the country. He has a line of wheels and has starred in his own TV show called Overhaulin', and is now one of the most recognized personalities not only in the automotive world, but also in the celebrity world as well. Join us as Wayne tells the story of how this roadster came to be so many years ago, and why it could be argued that it may one day be considered a very important car in the history of hot rodding, to be shown at Pebble Beach Concourse or on display at the Peterson Museum in Los Angeles. Well, until that happens, Wayne's going to enjoy driving this sweet deuce as much as he can. Now, let's go for a ride. My name's Wayne Tyson. I'm a hot rod guy. I've been into cars since I was 12 years old. Uh, a lot of them have run and a lot of them haven't, but I've loved every one of them. And the ones that you're going to, the one you're going to see today is my 32 Ford high boy. And I've had it on the road now for 35 years. I, I found it. I worked for the good guys part time when I lived in Pleasanton and I, I started at the very first show they had helping Gary in Maryland and ended up being the event coordinator for the four car shows up there. And I had a 38 Packard at the time, and I've always lived, having been an East Coast boy, I've always wanted a 32 High Boy Roadster. And there was one of my exhibitors had a chassis there and a body, and you know, on sale in his booth. And I kept coming back and looking at it and looking at it, and by the time the weekend was over, I had my Packard for sale and, the, uh, and had the Roadster, pushing the Roadster chassis to my home. It took me well, probably five years to get it finished to the state it is right now. And like I said, it's been done now for 35 years and it's my baby. I, when I worked for the good guys, I, I've known Chip Foos since he was about 13 or 14 years old. And I've known his dad, Sam, even longer. And having worked at the good guys, I used to see him all the time. Well, I was working for the good guys at the Oakland Roadster Show one year and Chip was there. Uh, he was a senior in college at the art center. And then he said, my dad tells me you're building a 32. And I said, yeah. And he said, can I design it for you? And I thought to myself, what does this kid know? I've never seen any of his drawings. I don't know that he can color. But uh, I said, yes. And over the next months, I, he would fax me. That's back when they had fax machines. He would fax me a picture, a d drawing, and I would say, do this, change this, or whatever. And um, it went from there. And then I had the car about 70% completed, and I ran out of time instead of money. It's an unusual to have both. And he told me that his dad had just finished a car and had nothing to do for the next three months, nothing scheduled. And he, he's, I said, well, I can't afford your father and he said, yes, you can. I've talked to him already. And he says, get the car. We'll get the car down there. And he, so we did. And Sam finished it for me, did the paint and the body work and, and put everything back together as it should be. And it's run like a champ ever since then. It's just a hobby a chassis. And it's got uh, Hildebrand torsion bar and bushings. And it had torsion bars front and rear. But I since changed the rear end and put coilovers on it. And, but it's unusual to see a Roadster without a four bar front end. And this has got the torsion bar and it runs great, runs great with that. It's got Kugel spindles, brake and brake brackets and steering bars. And it's got Chevelle rotors uh, and seats on the front. 
The transmission is a Chevy Stage 2 350 automatic. Uh, the brakes on it are um, Corvette master cylinders and it's got a, a JFZ disc brake shaft and rear and it's stainless steel brake lines. The, the rear end is a Ford 9 inch. The gas tank is a Tanks uh, gas, stainless steel gas tank, 17 gallons. Steering's is a, a Mullins uh, steering wheel. It has a VW rack and pinion, Kugel spindles, and Adrian shocks. Has an I did it steering tilt steering column, and it's got Borgeson universal steering U joints. And the steering wheel is uh, from Boyd's. Um, I also have Boyd wheels on the car, and simply because when Chip graduated from college, he went to work for Boyd, and my son went, was working for Boyd at the same time while he was going to graduate school. So that, that's the reason it had Boyd wheels on it. I wished I could get Chip to send me new wheels that had Foos wheels on it, but uh, I <laughs> that hasn't happened yet. The grill is a DF Metalworks stainless steel grill. Radiator is a brass works with a transmission cooler and overflow. Uh, the windshield posts are handmade uh, along with the mirrors. The headlights are King B mounted on the grill shell. The paint and body work are all done by Sam Foos who lived in Solvang at the time. Uh, the paint was interesting because we wanted it to be red. I was a fire, I've been a fire investigator and on the bomb squad all my life. And uh, so it had to be it had to be red with flames. And I rode around with Sam one day at the Good Guys Pleasanton Car Show and on my golf cart for about four hours looking at reds. And at that time, I never knew how many different color reds there were. There's reds with yellows and greens and blues. And I mean, amazing. And we never did find the red that we wanted. And about two weeks later, I get a call from Sam saying, I found the red you wanted. And I said, oh, right, great. Send me a paint swatch so I can see what it looks like. He said, I've already painted the chassis. I'm painting the body next week. Needless to say, I was down there that weekend. And it was the red that we were looking for. And the sad thing was, I thought it would have some exotic name, you know, but it's DuPont number 57. The body is a Gibbons 32 Roadster body. The hood is the only uh, metal part, and that's a, that was original, but that's been completely reworked. It was a four-piece hood. Now it's a three-piece hood with um, uh, the side panels molded, and Sam, until the day he passed, cussed Chip and myself out for designing that because it was the hardest thing he did on the whole car was to rework those side panels to make them uh, into the scoops that turn into the frame rails, and which to me is one of the remarkable things about the car. But it's one of these things that you look at and some people don't even notice. In fact, the taillight assembly, we made a wooden buck for the taillights and we took it to a like an un unnamed pizza parlor place and 11 o'clock at night when all the managers would be gone and took the plastic and put it in their oven to mold it onto the wooden buck. And if that we would have gotten caught, they probably food and drug would have closed the place up forever. But uh, we gave each of the kids that was working, I think five or $10 and, and that worked out fine. The grill shell was reformed. The windshield was sectioned and molded into the cow and it was boxed and then has a Brizio spreader bar. Pete and Jake's tubular X members and ladder bars are on it. The engine is a 400 horsepower Chevy. Uh, it was balanced. It's got an Edelbrook four barrel carburetor, a Morosa oil pan with a high volume oil pump, uh, crane lifters and a rolled rocker panels. It's got a B&M gear drive. The interior was done by Sid Shavers, custom upholstery in Santa Clara, California. Sid did an excellent job, and the, the funny thing was, is as I was building this car, I got to know him real well through the good guys, and he kept telling me that when he, I was ready for the interior, he wanted to do it. And I said, I don't think so. I can't afford your interiors. And he said, no, you don't understand. I'm going to do the interior. Well, when it came to have the interior done, Sid 
did it. And uh, of course, the only thing I couldn't do is tell anybody how much it cost. And in fact, thank goodness, I don't honestly remember now. It's been so long, but uh, he did that. He did the interior. I've had a lot of friends that have helped me with the car over the years. And if it wasn't for them, it probably would have never got put together. I can, I can do, I've done engines, I've done transmissions, I've built bodies, I've been done chassis, but I don't, uh, you know, it's been a long time and, and, uh, now it's more fun to drive them and just to have fun with them. Thanks for joining us again today. We appreciate you watching and hope we see you here again next week. I know we have many new subscribers. Thanks to Dennis Collins coffee walk, YouTube channel. So a special welcome to all of you guys. Glad to have you here with us. Be sure to check out the many videos we have. And until next week, please remember, be careful out there.